Witcher is someone who's undergone many torturous years of extensive training, harsh mental and physical conditioning and secretive rituals. These techniques, especially the rituals, are kept a closely guarded secret by the Witcher schools, such as the School of the Wolf located at Kaer Morhen. All this is to prepare the Witcher to become a monster slayer for hire. Geralt of Rivia, the central character in Andrei Swarovski's The Witcher series and the games inspired by them, he said in the stories to be one of the greatest witches. He's legendary and known around the world, but if he is famous or rather infamous, it's open to interpretation and very subjective, a question even Geralt himself could not answer. Those destined to become witches taken as children, often left by their parents or taken by the ruler's surprise. These children are subjected to intense alchemic processes, consumption of mutagenic compounds and relentless physical and magical training to make them dangerous and highly versatile against a vast array of opponents. Therefore, many witches possess superhuman speed, strength and other deadly powers, though the extent of these changes varies from witcher to witcher, with some being more powerful than others. Though these procedures ultimately mean that each fully trained witcher is a mutant that was specifically to hunt and kill monsters. These enhancements vary from witcher to witcher depending on how the mutagens take effect, but the key permanent results of mutations shared by all witches tend to include the following. Cat-like eyes which grant night vision. Witchers can constrict their pupils to see in blinding lights or open them to see near pitch darkness. The night vision can also be enhanced further with witcher potions. However, on its own is enough not to require any enhancement. Their senses overall become enhanced. This allows them to identify species of animal in the scent of their blood, and detect nearby creatures when out of sight, almost like a sixth sense. Witches also possess almost complete resistance to disease, so good that it could almost function as immunity and an overall enhanced immune system, allowing them to consume large quantities of potions that could prove very very deadly if consumed by a normal human. This is also accompanied by lower heart rate and accelerated healing, granting quick recovery from injuries. The accelerated heart rate also has the effect of extended stamina, but these enhancements aren't perfect as these injuries can still prove to be fatal if not cared for correctly, much like any normal wound a human might face. Mutations also grant a long lifespan and prolonged youth. The head of the Witcher school, Vesemir, is said to be a few centuries old, but has the look of a man in his late 50s. The thing is, seeing a Witcher is rare, an old one even rarer, as despite their longer lifespans, many are killed fighting monsters before they get to a point of being considered old. The enhancements also increase their strength, speed and reflexes and endurance far beyond any normal or well-trained human that allows them to swiftly end fights with minimal effort and perform physical feats non-witches couldn't hope to match. A witch's physical skill alone are good enough to defeat most monsters single-handedly if combined with the extensive training and proper weaponry. They've been known to survive strikes of powerful monsters such such as giants that would otherwise kill with a single blow. However, as demonstrated throughout the saga, dealing with multiple monsters at a time could still prove to be treacherous. Alongside their physical combat skills, most witches had the ability to perform simple but versatile combat magic in the form of signs. These signs are performed by making symbols with your fingers and using an audible phrase in most cases. Though, there are those such as Geralt of Rivia who have been known to be able to perform signs without vocalizing it. Some have speculated that his ability to do this could be down to his lineage. They also develop a sixth sense that allows them to feel things around them. These could be items that are important or people's immediate intentions. This explains their ability to track and hunt people and monsters. It should also be considered that in the case of Geralt of Rivia, his magic abilities are much more prevalent than most witches, again potentially because of his lineage. Though during their training, a witcher to be covers proficiency in any weapon that comes to hand, a witcher's training focuses on two weapons in particular, a steel sword and a silver one, one for humans, one for monsters. These swords are typically carried on the back. In Geralt's case, if he knows he has no use for the silver sword, kept on roach until it is needed. To enhance their already incredible abilities, witches also use powerful potions, having developed an advanced tolerance to their inherent toxicity, but these potions are still limited to a few at a time. Even when they're much weaker potions, be fatal to any ordinary being. Much like many aspects of becoming a witcher, how these potions are made is a closely guarded secret. However, we do get a glimpse of how these potions are made throughout the saga, which is developed in much more detail in the video games. As discussed earlier, the formal magic training deals with science and low level yet versatile forms of magic that allow witches to cast spells and enchantments with simple gestures. The thing is, without extensive improvements and practice, these are mere tricks compared to what sorcerers can do, but they serve very well for someone with a sword in one hand and has a variety which can catch foes off guard. The more powerful magic used by mages often takes a significantly longer time to prepare. While all signs are instantaneous, they can be used without much thought or preparation. Additionally, witches are 
are trained by seasoned mages. Typically, a witcher is formidable and often overwhelming in combat to the more common races of the world, thanks to their superhuman physical prowess, regenerative capabilities, and magic. But they are not invincible. They can still make mistakes, take a single misstep in a battle against the common man or a fearsome supernatural demon, or be overwhelmed by numbers and the rare individuals who have the skill to match them. Though these individuals are rare, and most who have managed to slay a witcher is often not from skill, rather dumb luck or by ambush. Though a witch's eyes are often one way they stick out, the standard means of identification is the witch's medallion. It aids them in detecting monsters, and no witcher would part with one willingly. Lear Bonhart boasted of a collection of three such medallions as proof of his martial skill. The form of an individual medallion is the head of a wolf, cat, griffin, and so on, which indicates the school in which the witcher was trained. For example, Geralt of Rivia carries a wolf medallion, being part of the school of the wolf at Caer Morhen. Information in witches from the other schools, such as the cat and griffin, tend to be more prevalent in the game series rather than the saga. It's a common belief among witches themselves that they have no capacity for emotions. This may be debatable and rather relative considering the rigours of the training and dangers they face on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, how each witcher deals with the changes that happen to them. Perhaps they have simply never had the time or exposure to society to develop or recognise the reactions to mundane experience that most take for granted. It may also be thought that a combination of their hard training, genetic modification, and seclusion for society may cause blunted emotional expression. As Geralt or Rivia, Lambert and Eskel all exhibit emotions such as love, fear, joy and anger, lust, sympathy, among many more.